Andy Farrell named his 37-man squad for the Six Nations just this morning. Plenty of talking points. Alan, I suppose the biggest one, Joey Carberry left out. What do you make of it? Uh, surprised, I think. Um, obviously, um, it's a big call. I think first and foremost, we should, uh, we probably, we could easily get lost here and Joey Carby not being in the squad um, because he's the most experienced fly half behind Johnny Sexton. But I think Ross Bourne had to be in there. And I think that's that's where the problem came for Joey Carberry. Uh, Ross Bourne's form, that winning kick against Australia, um, the way he's played with Leinster, the connection between him and, and uh, you know, Gibson Park, um, players around him as well, Gary Ringrose. Um, so look, it's it's a uh, it's a tough it's a tough one on Joy Carberry. There's no doubt about that. But um, they're picking three fly halves, and and somebody had to lose out. And I think obviously Jack Crowley has come on the scene as well, and 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 both Carberry and Crowley have worked well together, and and played well together, and looked um, like there's a bit of cohesion there, a bit of an understanding. Um, but for Joy Carberry, it's a blow. It's a big blow. And I thought he's played quite well this year. Um, I think some would argue that, um, you know, he needs to do better and needs to front up more. But I, th I think a lot of his play this year has been really good. It was interesting. He was taken off on, on, on at the weekend against Northampton and Car uh, um, Jack Crowley was pushed in at 10. I don't think that helps the situation a week before an Irish squad. But... Um, credit to Jack Crowley and and to Ross Byrne for for you know them taking on the mantle and putting pressure on on the on, on Joey Carberry and we've been looking for that for years. Um, there's still a difference between all the fly halves and 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 what Johnny Sexton brings, but it's a it's a big disappointment. And you know when you when you peel it back, one of them had to lose out. And so when I said shock at the start, I I didn't see it coming. Um, I thought Andy Farrell would still stick with him, but it is what it is now. He's got to dust himself down and, and try and respond um, with a big game for Munster at the weekend. Matt, did you see it coming? I know you've always been a big fan of Ross Byrne. Of course, a kick against Australia takes something to do that and win the game pretty much. But Matt, did you see did you see that happening where Joey Carberry missed out? It's true. Let me chop that up into two pieces. I think it's the right decision but I didn't think they'd do it. Uh, I wrote in the Irish Times about it last week. Jo Joey's, oh, look, I really feel for Joey and I don't want to be smacking him down and his family and he are going to be really hurting. You know, we all remember getting dropped and it, it's a horrible, horrible feeling. And, and you know, to, for Joey, it's, it's in, you know, it's in front of everyone. It's humiliating and all that. And I'm, I'm not trying to push down on the guy, but what Joey doesn't do well for Ireland when there's a little bit less time is very his depth, at like like Sexton does so brilliantly. And, and you know, look, it's what Alan says. Sexton's an all-time great, so no one's going to be as good as Sexton. So let's let's sort of put Johnny aside. But what Joey's not doing is moving on to the ball before he catches it, getting his hip square up the field so he becomes a threat. And so you, he's not just a distributor, you become an, a threat. So defenders are drawn to you. And then you can pass and do what you want. Joey's a fine player. There's no two ways about it. But at an international level, he hasn't been doing that. Ross Byrne does that brilliantly for Leinster, and he's been superb for Leinster. Now, Joey's had, I think it's 37 caps, or whatever it is, 30-something caps, and a lot of opportunity. At a certain point, I felt the selectors had to say, look, he just hasn't moved on at international level the way we wanted to. And I agree with Quinn. He's played well for Munster. Um, uh, in recent weeks. I, I think it's a really hard-nosed decision, a really tough decision. I admire them. I didn't think they'd do it. I just think Ross Byrne deserves another shot. And and I, it's not me, Matt Williams, saying that. He's earned another shot. And especially when you consider that what Ireland are doing is playing a very similar system to Lancaster, almost identical. I, I think that he fits into that system and is playing doing the things I just said, moving on to the ball, varying his depth depending where he wants to attack and getting his hip square up the field and becoming a threat. Uh, and you can see how flat he was last week and beautiful skills. He's earned his shot at this. But, uh, again, I, I, I didn't think 
Farrell and his selectors would do it. Uh, but I do think it's – at this point, I don't think Joey's gone or finished, but I think Ross Burns earned his shot, and I think it's the right decision. Yeah, we may well see – Joey come back in maybe for the World Cup if he has a yeah. good end of the season, of course. But Alan, in your eyes, who's who would be? I know there's plenty of rugby and hasn't even started the Six Nations. Who is number two at the moment? Is it Ross Byrne or is it Jack Crowley? Um, I don't know. Um, I think what we saw in November when when Jack Crowley stepped up, you would think that um, we don't know this yet because the pecking order would suggest that it's Sexton, uh, Jack Crowley and Ross Byrne. It depends... Um, what they've seen in the last number of weeks. Jack Crowley's played a bit in centre, hasn't he? So he hasn't been starting at fly half. Ross Byrne has been playing consistently well with Leinster, given, you know, Leinster have 20 players in this Irish squad. It's phenomenal. Uh, 20 players in the squad. That just shows the depth, um, the level they're at, the confidence they're at, the cohesion they have. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what Ross Byrne does now when he's mixed and matched with other players around him. And, um, I think that, you know, we're probably all a little bit guilty of, of um, labeling, him, labeling Ross Byrne a little bit a couple of years ago as maybe limited in his skill sets and, you know, very good, solid out half, good kicker, uh, astute, um, great place kicker, does the basics well. Um, and any kind of faults that we could find were probably that ability to run at the line and be a real threat. I think he's worked on that. He, he's a big physical player. Um, but I see Jack Crowley as someone that he has some of the attributes that Sexton has, that little bit of physical presence, that bit of niggle, that bit of personality. Not to the same level. He's still a very young player. But I think that we've seen some glimpses that he could be the one that, that closes that gap um, that we have, you know, that we've been talking about for a long time. But so it's it's hard to say who's number two, who's number three. I think they'll be pitted against each other. I think this weekend again will will um, you know be be looked at closely, and probably the way they you know the way they train um, in the next couple of weeks. But there's not a lot of time. It's it's, it's two weeks. Saturday, two weeks. Um, they're going to be running out in the Principality against Wales. So. Um, it looks like that, you know, the talk is that Johnny Sexton will be back. Um, he'll probably have to train that week at a match, so it'll be um, it'll be a big boost for Ireland to have him. But if he didn't stay, well, given what we saw in November, it'll probably be it, it possibly Jack Crowley. But I don't know. Uh, that could have changed in the mindset of Mike Cat, who obviously would be the main main man, go to man here as to what backline he wants for 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 the game against Wales. Matt, a final one on the tens. You know, throughout the Six Nations, say everyone is fit. You know, Johnny's obviously, well, should hopefully start the first game. But how would you play it out in regards to 10 game time, you know, throughout the tournament? Obviously, plenty of variations and changes. But if everyone's fit and ready to go throughout the tournament? I, I think Jack Crowley is a great talent. I, I do think 2027 World Cup in Australia, Crowley's your man. And I think he'll come through in that time. Ross Byrne, 100 games for Leinster, Heineken Cup finals under his belt, a lot of experience, um, superb goal kicker, metro, metronomic at the moment. Look, I, I think Ross might do that, although Crowley, the fact he can play 12 might make him a good bench player. I, I, I'm not so certain Sexton's going to make this first game. Um, it's, I think it's just going to be a medical decision. And, and as Alan knows, like when, you, when you've got a, fractured, a fracture up here, the whole thing's just going to be when they're going to scan him and say, it's thick enough that you can play. I personally think they mightn't play him against Wales because if he plays against Wales and gets injured, he's out for the six, the whole Six Nations. It's the French game that they're really focusing on. So maybe they hold him back and give one of these two or both of them, because one will start and one will be on the bench, uh, the Wales game. Um, I, I suspect that might be the case. I, I can't guarantee that because it is a medical decision. Sexton wants to play every single second of every single game. We know that. But I, I, I think it would be really good also moving into the World Cup, if these guys are going to play a big game in the World Cup, if Johnny gets injured, I think it would be really – Wales would be the one to do it at this stage because the atmosphere in Cardiff, I mean, that is a mind-boggling atmosphere. With the, It's just the most electric place to play in the world, in my opinion, as far as pre-game and, and noise and the ability to communicate, all the things you need, you tend to do, you put under the extreme pressure in that, that cauldron, that beautiful cauldron. <laughs> 
the the uh, the, the old Millennium Stadium, the Principality Stadium, with the singing and all that sort of stuff. It's just horrific out on the pitch. So I think it'd be a great experience for one of these guys. For me, um, I, I I definitely uh, have Ross in front at this stage of his career. That is not being detrimental to Crowley. I think he's a great talent. I think he will be the man come uh, come post post this World Cup. 